And we're getting a picture on the TV. I'm going to step off the lamb now. I was 18 months old when Neil and Buzz took the first footsteps on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And I would dream about becoming an astronaut. He came in peace for all mankind. And 50 years on, we're still in awe of what they did. So in my spare time, I would paint these men standing on this this other world. I created one image and it's of um, Jack Schmidt in the shadow of a, of a rock and it was that image that I suddenly thought oh I, I might have I might be onto something here. That was the first one that really worked for me and um, and then after that one I painted uh, an image that I call Pete and it's um, uh, a simple image of Pete Conrad who was the commander of Apollo 12 and he's just sort of bouncing towards us the viewer and it was something that I just did for my own use and then I would reach out to these astronauts that were now the subject of my work and um, sent images digitally to them to say what do you think have I managed to capture something here that you approve of and how do they make you feel Looks like you guys have been playing in a coal bin. And then I would get I would get an email back from these guys. And I've had some wonderful comments directly from from these uh, heroes. When I start the process of working with with the watercolours, with these images, uh, I will try and um, create an atmosphere in my studio. I can see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads in the fine sandy particles. Hey, this is Houston. We're copying. I'll play um, the sound of the men talking at the time. There seems to be no difficulty in moving around as, as we suspected. Uh, it's even perhaps easier than the simulation. And I um, evoke these these memories that I don't have myself, but I try and think this is as close as I can get to them and their memories. When I started out, I wanted the images to look like I captured that moment almost there, just off camera, um, as they were filming themselves. So, you know, I was secretly the third the third person on the moon with them, with my sketchbook and my paints. That's that's my passion, um, and it's the light and dark that I find very interesting on the lunar surface. It's that harshness. It's it's all or nothing. There are very very few midtones on the moon. So working in a very limited palette myself, I also try and achieve that. And then towards the end of an image, I'll, I might have a nice clean image of an astronaut there standing on the moon, and then. I think well it's, it's not real it's not it's not what they experience so I get my brush out and I'll splash paint on the image I'll get my toothbrush and dip it in the paint and flick dust or, or my equivalent of dust um, over the, the image and really dirty it up if you like um, and trying to achieve uh, a kind of a reportage feel when I'd got this body of work together I thought now what can I do with these? So to get a validation for myself I wanted to get some testimonials from people, some from the astronauts themselves, some from people that I respected very highly um, and uh, one such person was Chris Riley. I first met Martin at an event I was organising and he came up and introduced himself and told me a bit about the paintings he'd been doing and um, then later sent me a couple of them to have a look at and from the beginning I just loved what he was trying to do because it created something, a different telling of the Apollo story that photography and film footage, the archive that I've been working with for years, didn't really achieve somehow and that was I think partly the, the human spirit of being there that, that, that he'd somehow captured within his paintings. Chris and I spent a few brainstorming sessions together and um, we thought that there must be a way that we can bring 
Chris's gift of the knowledge and his writing to this subject that would also complement what I'd done. We spent some time talking about the kind of voice that we wanted to tell the stories through, whether it was a child watching um, these moon adventures happen from Earth, or even the father of a, of a child, maybe one of the engineers working on the Apollo missions, telling his son or daughter about them. But I sat down and tried to write it in those voices, and it just didn't work somehow. And I kept looking back at Martin's pictures and thinking more about the title, Where Once We Stood, that he'd come up with for this series of paintings he'd been doing. And, do you know, it just felt like it had to be told in the astronauts' voices and the words spoken at the time that they were there living and working on the moon. So I started writing the first chapter with this in mind and um, very quickly found that it just flowed. That first chapter on Apollo 11 just tumbled out and naturally seemed to complement Martin's paintings as I found the voice that I needed to, to tell the stories of these 12 lucky human beings that lived a small part of their lives on the moon. It's always a nerve-wracking process to actually take an image that I've lived with and I've nurtured and I've created these images in the loneliness of my studio. All those months and months and months and in some cases years back where you dreamed that this might actually end up in some form that you can share with the public and to see it and be happy with it and be proud of it it's a, it's a, it's a really special moment. Magnificent flight out here. Magnificent ventilation. 